both North Dakota senators here today. It's remarkable. And uh, before Senator Kramer uh, opens with his short statement, uh, Senator Hoven, uh, you have your special uh, senator here from uh, North Dakota to introduce, Senator Hoven. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it and appreciate uh, both uh, you and Senator Heinrich as our colleagues from Midwestern states. Good to be here with you. And I, I just wanted to um, be here to uh, thank uh, Senator Kramer for introducing the uh, U.S. Frankie Evans Act. I am co-sponsoring with him. He introduced it last Congress in the House and was able to pass it through the House uh, through some very good work. I introduced it in the Senate. Uh, we did not get it through. Uh, but it, it is an important bill. It's one that he's worked hard on. It's one that I'm committed to as well. And so uh, I certainly want to make an appeal as well to the committee to, to pass it in timely way so we can get to the floor and, and do everything we can to pass it. It, it is important. It does recognize uh, 74 um, members of our incredible military who uh, died during the Vietnam War and we believe uh, deserve just re recognition on the uh, Vietnam War uh, wall memorial. So again, I just want to be here to <coughs> lend my support uh, to my esteemed colleague uh, and to this legislation. And uh, I thank you, uh, both you and uh, uh, the ranking member uh, from Maine um, for uh, giving me this time and for this subcommittee's consideration of this important legislation. Thanks much. Thank you, Senator Hoven. Senator Kramer. Thank you, Chairman Daines and Ranking Member King, members of the committee. Special thanks to Senator Hoven um, for, for his attention and support. And I, I'm, you know, as, as you know, I'm here today to speak in favor of the bill, Senate Bill 849, the USS Frankie Evans Act. It's a bill, as Senator Hoven said, I did introduce in the House. In fact, when it came to my attention, I didn't even know it would be difficult. And as it turns out, it wasn't. We were able to unanimously pass it with support from both the leadership of, of both parties into the National Defense Authorization Act as a floor amendment. Um, but the, the, the last 74, the 74 sailors that lost their lives in the Frankie Evans, um, refers to, 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 to sailors who, by a technical glitch, don't have their names placed on the, uh, the, the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Interestingly, this tragedy happened 50 years and 16 days ago. And it just seems like this is the year that maybe we could remember them properly. It's a bipartisan bill uh, supported by an equal number of Republicans and Democrats, including both the chairman and the ranking member of this subcommittee and, of course, Senator Hoven. Last year, I, I introduced, as I said, and it unanimously passed in the House, and it was stripped in the conference committee. Uh, but since then, I've moved from the House to the Senate, and I'm bringing this bill with me and, and my enthusiasm for it. Today's hearing is a significant step, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate this very much, and, and thank both you and, and Ranking Member King for your support of the, of the legislation. Uh, the, the Evans was a destroyer. It served multiple combat support tours during the Vietnam War. After one of those tours... It was sent to participate in a training exercise in the South China Sea uh, before its scheduled return to combat. I think it's important to note that. During the exercise, the Evans collided with an Australian aircraft carrier. This accident split the ship in two, resulting in the death of the 74. Only one of the 74 bodies was recovered. The rest are, are buried at sea. As you know, Mr. Chairman, for a veteran's name to be added to the Vietnam Memorial Wall, certain criteria must be met, and you'll hear about them today, I'm sure. But one of the qualifications is that those who perished must have been in or directly on their way to a combat zone. Because the Evans was not in or directly on its way to a combat zone, the names of those who died are not included on the wall. Even though the ship had previously provided gunfire support off the coast of Vietnam, including during the Tet Offensive, the ship was also set to return to combat after the exercise, just as the other U.S. ships did, exactly. They were scheduled to and did return. I first learned about this injustice during a weekly radio uh, town hall that I, that I host when the son-in-law of, of veteran Dick Grant, a USS Frankie Evans survivor and resident of Fargo, North Dakota, called the show. When I heard his story, I looked into the issue further and found that adding names to the wall is not as unprecedented as some would have us believe. In fact, according to the Vietnam Memorial Fund, the wall has been updated to add roughly 400 names. More to the point, a recent, just a couple of weeks ago, Washington Post story cited a Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund study 
which detailed a series of duplications, misspellings, and miscounts along the Vietnam Memorial. Clearly, the wall has seen changes before, and it needs changes again. Throughout the years, many USS Frankie Evans survivors like Dick Grant and family members and friends of the deceased have worked to include the lost 74 and changes and improvements to the wall. These advocates have petitioned the Department of Defense to add the names, but their attempts have been denied. This bill would change that. Mr. Cha Chairman, it's inexplicable to me how bureaucrats in Washington could determine these sailors' ultimate sacrifice is unworthy of being mem memorialized simply because they weren't on the right side of an arbitrary line. Tom Corcoran Jr. is the brother of, to Patrick Corcoran, one of the lost 74, and he said it best, quote, they wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the war, yet our government won't chisel 74 names on that piece of granite. It's an absolute disgrace, it's just wrong, end quote. These men left home and said goodbye to their families at the request of our nation, and now they're buried at sea. But instead of honoring them by including their names on the wall, we sit here arguing about it 50 years and 16 days later. Let's be clear. The exclusion of these veterans is a disservice to those who gave their lives for our country. A technicality is not an excuse for inaction. A previously issued memo is not a reason to express disapproval, and an objection from Washington's bureaucracy, bureaucracy should not stop us. Throughout the process, I've heard every excuse. It's too hard, or we have to draw a line somewhere, or there isn't space. We're, gonna, we're working on sending a man to Mars, but there's, somehow we can't do this. They're wrong, Mr. Chairman. It's not too hard. Certainly not as hard as not seeing finality, not seeing your loved one memorialized appropriately, certainly not as difficult as going to war for our country. If our government's capable of this, they're capable of adding their names. I'm thoroughly persuaded that they deserve it. I hope those who participate in today's hearings walk away with the same conviction. In fact, the only opponents I've ever heard from, ever heard from, are the people whose job it would be to do this. I've never had an objection from a, from a single constituent or person in the media or throughout this country except people who live in this town whose job it would be to find a way to do this. And I think it's time that we as elected leaders stand up and do the right thing. With that, I thank you for the opportunity.